Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2021 Alumni Awards. As a reminder, all community members and visitors are required to wear a mask indoors in public spaces at UMBC. We ask that you avoid crowding and allow for physical distancing when possible. Our program will begin in just a moment, so we ask at this time that you take your seats and silence your electronic devices. Please note the emergency exits located throughout the hall. As we begin this evening's program, we would like to share this important message about our campus. UMBC was established upon the land of the Piscataway and Susquehannock peoples. Over time, citizens of many more indigenous nations have come to reside in this region. We humbly offer our respect to all past, present, and future indigenous people connected to this place, acknowledging this land and the lands of each of our online attendees. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause as our awardees and speakers take the stage. Now, please turn your attention to the screen for a brief video. Um, so the first person I told about my scholarship was my grandma, Mima. She was so excited for me. I'm her first grandchild and she has no issue telling me I'm her favorite. And I'm the first person in uh, my family to actually go to college. So she's just very proud and happy that I was able to get that opportunity. Uh, so here at UMBC, Dr. Herbowski definitely inspires me the most. And it's not just because he knows who the swimmers are when he's walking down Academic Row. He always has a smile on his face. He always says how much he loves his job. And honestly, that's the life I aspire to live. I hope that I'm smiling that much every day when I go to work and interacting with as many people as he gets to interact with. I think for me, it's honestly the people I surround myself with, like all of my friends that I really in, are, am inspired by from UMBC. All of them are so dedicated to like their careers and they're really focused on their school. Not only that, but they're just really like caring people and the fact that they work so hard, it really inspires and motivates me to pursue my career as well. My dad went to UMBC. He graduated in 1992 um, with a Bachelor of Arts degree. We, in my family, we love UMBC. We've always had, you know, plenty of uh, UMBC merch around the house. When I visited UMBC, I really liked the campus. I really liked uh, what I heard from, you know, some of the professors that I got to hear from uh, on my visit day. Um, and I just really felt like this was the place for me. Um, I think donors should give to scholarships and UMBC in general because they help students like me who have a lot of grit and might need help getting through college financially. Um, this scholarship um, specifically is helpful for students like me who, you know, want to succeed and just might need a little financial help with it. Good evening, my name is Danielle Odom, and on behalf of the Office of Alumni Engagement at UMBC, welcome to the 32nd Alumni Awards. Tonight we come together as a campus community to uplift and celebrate 13 outstanding alumni and faculty who've made an impact on the local, regional, national, and global stages. 
After a year hiatus, and with all we've experienced during these last 20 months, it brings me great joy to be part of an event that will hopefully leave you feeling optimistic about the future and pride in being a part of the UMBC community. Thank you for being with us tonight and enjoy the ceremony. Again, welcome to UMBC's 2021 Alumni Awards Ceremony and to Earl and Daria Linehan Concert Hall. Our first speakers are Mr. Brian Frazee, President of the Alumni Association Board of Directors and a 2011 and 2012 graduate with degrees in political science and public policy. And Ms. Leslie, Leslie Lyles Smith, Alumni Awards Committee Chairperson with a 1991 degree in health science and policy. Good evening and welcome to the 2021 UMBC Alumni Awards Ceremony. As the representative body of over 85,000 graduates, the Alumni Association and its Board of Directors are proud to support this signature event. I echo what Stanielle Odom said in the opening video. It brings me great joy to be with you this evening. We also want to take a moment to thank Dr. Rabowski for his continued support of our alumni community, and we look forward to celebrating you and your well-deserved retirement in the spring. The awards bestowed tonight are presented by the UMBC Alumni Association in coordination with the Office of Institutional Advancement and with the support of the UMBC community. The nomination and selection process is a year-round endeavor led by the Board of Directors Alumni Awards Committee. Leslie Lyle Smith serves as chairperson for the committee and I'd like to acknowledge her leadership in leading this committee during this extraordinary year. Thank you, Brian. This year's committee had a truly impressive slate of nominations to choose from. As I ask the committee members in attendance to stand, please join me in thanking each of them for all of their work. It is a testament to the fortitude of UMBC community that we are able to celebrate these awardees in person this year. We are also greatly appreciative of our community members participating online. Throughout the ceremony, we hope that you'll share your appreciation for our winners, favorite UMBC memories, and other shout outs in the chat. The alumni and faculty we will recognize tonight truly capture the depth of the UMBC community. I'm humbled to share the stage tonight with our remarkable honorees. During our introductory video, you probably noticed we highlighted four students. This year, the UMBC Alumni Association awarded scholarships to these four deserving students. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge these awardees who are here with us tonight. Will Laser, Computer Science. <laughs> Haley Sayo, Psychology. Madeline Songer, Media and Communication Studies. And Kirsten Tran, Biological Sciences. Please stand, everyone, and let's give them all a well-deserved round of applause. Each of you embodies the very grit and, and excellence that will carry you and UMBC to continued success. We are so proud of you, and I have a feeling we will see all of you up on this stage getting your own awards in the near future. Sponsorship of this evening's program benefits the Alumni Endowed Scholarship, which strives to make a meaningful difference in the lives of deserving students by helping them achieve their dream of receiving a degree from UMBC. 
Over the years, the UMBC Alumni Association has provided scholarships to outstanding rising juniors and seniors, awarding more than $225,000 in scholarships over the past 14 years alone, and helping more than 129 students graduate. I'd like to take a moment now to acknowledge our generous event sponsors. We are happy to recognize at the Retriever Believer le level, which is our premium sponsorship level, Christina and Sean McWilliams, class of 2016. Lucy and Donald Minor, classes of 2006 and 2010. And Kevin Yang, class of 2007, and Caitlin New, class of 2005. At the True Grid level, we have Scott Banta, class of 1997, and family. Zosha, class of 1993, and Chris, classes of 1990 and 1997, Baumhart. Kara Freeman, class of 1991. And Jane and Jeremy Reed, class of 2008 and 2010. You can view these, these and additional sponsors in our program. Please help me thank them one more time for their sponsorship of this event. Tonight is about celebrating individuals who have taken part of their UMBC experience to make a difference in the world. Since the last time we gathered, gathered for an alumni awards ceremony, we have collectively experienced a global pandemic. As the committee members were reading through the nomination materials in our traditional categories, we were floored to see how many of our alumni made meaningful and essential contributions in response to the pandemic. We realized that we could not choose between the work of these alumni and instead chose to create a special category this year to recognize each of them for their life-changing efforts. We celebrate the impact of their extraordinary contributions to their professions and their communities. It is now my pleasure to ask Dr. Bill LaCourse, Dean of the College of Natural and Mathematical Sciences, to introduce this category and the selected alumni. Thank you very much for the introduction, and uh, good evening. You're going to hear that a lot tonight. And uh, what a glorious day to have this event at the end of it. And uh, we couldn't ask for a better thing, uh, event. So here at UMBC, we often talk about our interdisciplinary approach to learning. And it's because we know that it takes collaboration across the disciplines to overcome society's biggest problems and challenges. And in their work, each of the awardees that has applied her skills in multiple disciplines, worked with interdisciplinary teams to develop scientific solutions that also demonstrate concern for individual people in the overall public health. We know that graduates from all our colleges have played a dramatic role in addressing the needs and challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm delighted to represent all the academic deans tonight in bestowing these special awards these four amazing alumni are invaluable to our society on general, national, and global stages. So, round of applause, please. So the first awardee, and it's my honor and pleasure to, to introduce Dr. Letitia Jarasa, was appointed appointed a Baltimore City Health Commissioner in March 2019 tasked with addressing multiple public health crises. As COVID-19 became a critical issue in the city, under Dr. Jarasa's leadership, the Baltimore City Health Department supported mobile testing 
contact tracing, food distribution to older adults, isolation and quarantine housing supports, and vaccination for Baltimore City residents. As early as October, over 60% of all eligible Baltimore residents, residents are fully vaccinated. That's no easy feat. We know that in America today. That is a challenge, so fantastic. Like most, she could not have imagined the challenges presented by a global pandemic. It magnifies all the challenges that face Baltimore, structural racism and poverty, health disparities, limited resources, but she has more than risen to the occasion, being the steady and strong face of public health guidance related to COVID-19. Her nominators note, she has a quiet, confident presence and a fierce intellect and passion for her work. She is deeply motivated to ensure all of Baltimore citizens have equitable access to care with the leadership skills to ensure that the goal is achieved. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Jarasa to the podium. Good evening, again. Um, I am so honored to be here tonight, and I'm so appreciative um, of this nomination. Uh, I want to start by first just thanking God. Um, as uh, the dean mentioned, I, I do have a calming presence. I was told that long before COVID, and I think it, it served me well in this role. Um, and that comes from the perfect peace that only he can give. Um, I also want to thank my mom, who's in the audience, who believed in me before I believed in myself. I want to thank my amazing husband, who I met at UMBC as a freshman uh, at Susquehanna, um, who has been an amazing partner um, and an amazing friend for over 20 years now. Um, so I thank him uh, because he is the reason I actually applied for the job of Commissioner of Health. Um, it was his support. It was him recognizing that this was my dream job before I even recognized that this was my, my dream job. Um, and along the way, um, he has remained that steadfast support. Um, so I thank him for that. Uh, I want to thank my four-year-old, Jaden, who was also in the audience, looking very bored. Um, <laughs> If you know anything about children, um, they are very humbling. Having a child is extremely humbling. I remember at the beginning of the pandemic, um, he would have just turned three, a little over three. Um, and, and I think, you know, I was going to work, it was late, uh, lots of long hours, and we were trying to explain to him that I was a doctor. Uh, and he seemed more surprised than, than impressed, um, I must say. Uh, I think his, his vision of a doctor was that person who, who gives him a shots, and uh, he, he just didn't think that I was, I was up to the to the task. Uh, but, but either way, um, I, I love him and I, I do this uh, for him because I want to see him, uh, you know, see me live out my dream. I want him to work this hard. Um, I want him to have this, this same work ethic and this same desire to pursue um, what God has called him to do. Um, and then last, but certainly not least, um, I want to thank Dr. Rabowski. Um, as I thought about this, I reflected on this award. My husband actually got the Rising Star Alumni Award in 2011, um, so ten, 10 years ago. Uh, and I, I thought about um, just Doc's uh, influence, right? And so I was a Meyerhoff scholar. I was an M11. Um, and I thought about other Meyerhoffs. My brother-in-law is, is a Meyerhoff and probably one of the top neuroscientists um, in the country, if not the world. Um, I thought about Dr. Corbett, who also received this award, um, who produce the technology that supports the Moderna vaccine, the very vaccine that I'm giving uh, in our health department clinics, um, literally saving millions of lives across the world. And that's just three of us, right? So imagine your influence and the legacy um, that you starting the Meyerhoff program has had, that your continued leadership at UMBC has had, um, but will also continue to have for generations to come. So I thank you, thank you, thank you, UMBC and the the Meyerhoff program literally changed my life. It is literally the reason I am standing here today. Um, so thank you. Um, good night, everybody. If you've heard Dr. Rabowski reference our next awardee, you probably know that her TED Talk has at least twice as many views as his own. But who's counting, right? <laughs> Dr. Caitlin Sadler is an engineer and an immunologist, and if you talk to her privately, you'll find her. She's been so many more things in life. 
But over the past year, she has been instrumental in the fight against COVID-19. Early in the pandemic, Dr. Sattler's lab developed a blood test to detect antibodies against multiple targets of the SARS-CoV-2 COVID-2 virus. She developed this assay with the goal of equitable access and repeatability in a variety of settings. The assay can be done by hand. It can use, utilize fresh blood serum or plasma. It can use dried blood samples, which are easy to collect from participants without, without quick access to clinics. Dr. Sattler has led a large team across three institutions to quantify the true rate of infection in the United States by testing asymptomatic participants. Beyond the US, her assay has been implemented in collaborated laboratories in Mali and Cambodia. Dr. Sattler's nominated Dr. Tamara Mendelson, professor of biological sciences, noted, Caitlin was my advisee in biological sciences and was always incredibly impressive. It's not surprised at all that she has achieved such success. We are excited to celebrate her success this evening. Please welcome to the podium, Dr. Caitlin Sattler. Thanks so much, Dr. LaCourse. And um, I'd have to say, I walked back into that green room and saw everyone pull out papers filled with their prepared remarks and um, thought I was just gonna wing it. Um, so, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to tell you one of my favorite stories about how UMBC has this massive reach beyond, you know, the fantastic biomedical engineering professors that I know that are alumni of the Meyerhoff program and everyone I, re I run into in my professional life. Um, this is a story more about outside of my professional life. Um, so I spent a couple years not living in Maryland. It was a bit of a shocker. Um, and I was up in Boston for my postdoc. And so um, one year up there, we decided to go down to Southie for St. Patrick's Day. Um, now this was a really special St. Patrick's Day. It was the day after UMBC was set to play UVA in March Madness. And as we all remember, UMBC won. <laughs> And my sister was up visiting, and so regardless, we decided before that game happened, she was gonna bring her UMBC rugby jacket, and we were both gonna just wear our UMBC gear out in Saudi. Maybe no one would know what it was, but heck, UMBC made it into March Madness. And so we had a wonderful night watching the game, went out to one of the last dive bars in Saudi, standing there in our rugby gear, having a drink, and um, her husband and my now husband kind of tap us and go, they're taking a picture of you. And we turned around and there were people taking a picture of the back of our jackets that said UMBC women's rugby, and they said, where did you get those? And we said, <laughs> we went there. <laughs> And I think that it's just, um, it's just a funny story for me that brings a bit of light into some of these dark times that says that the UMBC community goes so far, um, of course, in my professional life, but also just these small places it pops up. Um, and that was a wonderful moment just to be like, we went there. We went to school there. And yeah, I gave a seminar at UVA two years later, and it was a little awkward. but. <laughs> It was fun, and, um, and I mean, my time at UMBC was um, some of the best years of my life. I really enjoyed it. There is no place like this place, um, and I've seen that from the different institutions I've gone to, and um, uh, Dr. Rabowski, you've made such an impact on everyone's life. Um, I would remember bumping into you, and, and you'd say, how's your week going? And I said, well, I've got an exam on Friday, and then, um, two weeks later, you'd say, how'd your exam go? And I was like, how did you recognize who I was? <laughs> and you remembered. Um, and I think that all UMBC students know that. And on my Facebook, the second year retirement was announced, everyone was just saying, oh my gosh, I mean, of course he deserves it, and, and we hope he has a good retirement, but we're so sad. So um, just a huge thanks to the UMBC community, a huge thanks to the Alumni Awards Committee, um, and um, the Alumni Association for keeping the connection to UMBC strong. So, thank you. As an alum, 
Dr. Kate Tracy was no stranger to UMBC's campus, and we were happy to welcome her back to campus as an American Council of on Education Fellow at UMBC during the 2019-2020 academic year. Her nominator, Jess Myers, director of the UMBC's Women's Center, notes that Dr. Tracy's professional work has been characterized by two commitments. A belief in the promise of public health to improve the lives of marginalized populations and a desire to accomplish these goals more effectively. Since the emergence of COVID-19 pandemic, she has helped lead both UMBC and the University System of Maryland through a number of public health challenges and solutions. Her work has been instrumental in helping all system schools understand and navigate testing protocols and products. She has also been instrumental in developing the system-wide safety protocols that empowered universities to bring their community members back to campus. We are appreciative of Dr. Tracy's work to keep our campus community healthy and know that part of the reason that we are able to gather here tonight is in thanks to her efforts. What better reflection is there of hashtag UMBC together? And there's words I have never said before. So <laughs> please join me in welcoming Dr. Tracy to the podium. Good evening, uh, and thank you, Dean LaCourse, for that excellent introduction. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for the opportunity to be here this evening. I'd like to thank Jess Myers, who couldn't be here with us tonight, for nominating me, the Alumni Association, and the Selection Committee for selecting me for this award, and I am deeply humbled and honored um, by all of this. Um, I'd also like to give a special, special shout out to family members that traveled from out of state and friends that traveled from out of state to be here and share in this moment. Um, I grew up in a really small town in Ohio, so this feels like a very big deal to me to be standing in front of you tonight. Um, as I thought about what I wanted to say and, and what kind of messaging I wanted to try to convey to you tonight, um, a, a quote came to me from the tennis legend Arthur Ashe. And he, he was noted as saying, start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. I started out in a really small place, 1,400 people small. And I came to UMBC to pursue my dreams of being a psychologist and doing good in the world. And so that is where I started. And during the time that I was here at UMBC, um, Freeman and I, when I was his fellow, had this funny exchange. I said, you do know that not everybody's professional path is a straight line, right? Mine was a little more windy road kind of thing. Um, and, and it's important for us to share those stories. And part of my meandering path was UMBC created opportunities for me as a psychologist to learn about epidemiology and public health. And to be perfectly fair and frank, at the time I thought, what is this gonna do for me? Um, but you know, I did it and I, put it away in the, the Kate toolbox, and lo and behold, nearly two decades later, um, there was a really good reason to pull that back out. So that's what I had to work with. And in terms of doing what I could, yes, I was absolutely here as, as the American Council on Education Fellow from 2019 to the, to the spring of 2020, and it was the most wonderful community to step into for that academic year. And as everything started to shift sideways, Freeman was instrumental in creating opportunities for me to have a seat at the table and to be part of our conversations about how, what are we going to do to keep our campuses safe when at the beginning, we, there was so little that we knew that we could do in terms of prevention. And so Freeman created the opportunities Vice Chancellor Jo Boffman is here tonight. She also created opportunities. And I have been blessed for the last 20 months to be sitting at the table and participating in conversations with our system of Maryland, um, our 12 campus presidents and their leadership cabinets. And it has been the great privilege of my life to be in those conversations and to do what I could, much like Arthur Ashe. As we leave here tonight, I'd like to leave you with two final thoughts. While I am deeply honored to receive this award for distinguished service during the pandemic, as Freeman would say, it's not about me, it's about us. When we come together collectively and with common purpose, we can do amazing things. The UMBC and USM responses to the pandemic are beautiful examples of the power of collective action. We are also living through extraordinary times that are challenging not only our health and safety, but the very social fabric that weaves our lives together. Now more than ever, I invite each of you to start where you are, use what you have, 
and do what you can to be part of finding our way to brighter days. Thank you so much for the honor of being here tonight and for this award. Dr. Kizmikia Corbett is a name most retrievers know. As the scientific lead of the Vaccine Research Center's coronavirus team at the National Institutes of Health, she developed a new technology that is used in the mRNA-based COVID-19 vaccines, and she is credited as the lead inventor for the Moderna vaccine. She is the first black woman in the world to create a vaccine. I'm gonna read that sentence one more time. She is the first black woman in the world to create a vaccine. That's incredible. <laughs> what people don't always realize is that Dr. Corbett had a double major. In addition to biological sciences, Corbett's study of sociology developed it into a commitment to consider social factors throughout her scientific career. And more importantly, Dr. Corbett has explained the vaccine and the virus in highly accessible ways to media outlets, Instagram live viewers, and communities across the country, paying particular attention to communities of color. Her nominator, Dr. Phyllis Robinson, professor, and Robert and Jane Meyerhoff chair in the Department of Biological Sciences writes, Kizzy has been a strong advocate for UMBC, given talks and encouragement to our current students, and has given back to both the Meyerhoff program and the U-RISE training grant at UMBC. Unfortunately, Dr. Corbett could not be here in person this evening to accept both the pandemic response and outstanding alumna in Natural and Mathematical Sciences Awards. So please watch with me as she shares her remarks. Hello, my name is Kizmikia Corbett and I am a 2008 Biological Sciences major. I am currently an assistant professor at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. I am a viral immunologist, and I use my expertise to study novel vaccine development for coronaviruses and other viruses. I chose UMBC way back in 2004 because UMBC immediately felt like a place where I could blossom into being the scientist, but moreover, the person that I always wanted to be. UMBC has remained a part of my life, whether it be my involvement with the Meyerhoff Scholarship Program or the UMBC's community's continuous support at each step and each turn of my career. One example is when we were doing our phase three clinical trial for the COVID-19 vaccine. I told Dr. Robowski that I was concerned about the number of African-American participants. He and his wife expeditiously enrolled into our phase three clinical trial to show support, to show that they believed in me as a scientist and also believed in the work that we were doing on the vaccine development front. That is just one example of the type of support that UMBC has given me over the years. And it is just one reason why I call my UMBC community family and one reason why I am so proud to continuously tell everyone who I can tell that I am a retriever. And it is also one reason why I am so honored to be receiving this alumni award tonight. Thank you. Please welcome Dr. Mark Martin, Professor and Chair of the Chemical, Biochemical, and Environmental Engineering Department. Dr. Martin will introduce Dr. Scott Banta as the Outstanding Alumnus of the Year in Engineering and Information Technology. I first met Scott Banta during his senior year at UMBC when it was my first year as a faculty member. Scott is a native of Catonsville and grew up attending camps at UMBC, knowing very early on that he wanted to become a scientist. Now, originally, he attended Towson University, but then he came to his senses, <laughs> realized he wanted to be an engineer, and came to UMBC and joined my department. Uh, in fact, when he was in our department as an undergraduate, he started his research career uh, working on protein engineering, and he's been working in that same area ever since. 
Now, currently he's a professor and the vice chair and will be soon chair of the chemical engineering department at Columbia University. And his research remains in the area of proteins and peptides. He's published over 100 peer reviewed journal articles. He holds nine US patents and has received funding from pretty much every major federal funding source. Uh, and this is my favorite. He actually has co-founded a startup company called Ironic Chemicals, which I thought was kind of fun. In fact, that's one of the things I appreciate the most about Scott is his fabulous and excellent sense of humor. So I didn't really know Scott all that well when he was a student. But since he's progressed in his career, we've become very good friends. And a number of years ago, I asked him to serve as a member of our department's advisory board. And through that interaction, he's learned about our department's growth and our challenges. He's met with students and faculty. And he's been a fantastic champion, not only for our department, but for UMBC as a whole. So please join me in recognizing Dr. Scott Banta, this year's outstanding alumnus in engineering and information technology. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. This is really, really great honor, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, I want to say thank you to my, my beautiful wife, Stacy, my, my wonderful kids, uh, Zoe, Max, and Avery, who I think are all watching tonight, and my family and friends. This is really a great honor. And I also really want to thank UMBC. You know, I really look fondly back at my time here. You know, as Mark said, uh, I'm a local kid. I grew up in Catonsville, Catonsville High School. Uh, I went to summer camp here in the 1980s. Um, and when I, when I came to UMBC, I, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I knew I loved science and engineering and, and math, but I really wasn't sure what I wanted to pursue with my career. Um, and it was when I, when I, I remember going to the, uh, the orientation and hearing about the different uh, engineering disciplines and, and learning about chemical engineering that had the reputation of being one of the hardest majors, but also an opportunity where I could combine all the things that I love, physics and math and chemistry and biology, and, and I've been doing it ever since. And so I really am thankful for that first experience here. As Mark said, I also had my first research experience here. I joined a lab as an undergraduate research in protein engineering. I fell in love with it. I've been doing it ever since. Uh, I now run a, a, my lab at Columbia, uh, actually works on similar topics in synthetic biology, uh, molecular bioengineering, and related things. And, and, and I can really trace that lineage back to my first research experience at, 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 uh, at UMBC. I think the other thing that I realized when I was a student here is that I wasn't really sure what career path I wanted to have, but by watching the professors and the faculty here and the great mentoring that I received, it inspired me to want to pursue a career in academia, and by the time I graduated, I knew I wanted to be a professor and went off to graduate school in my postdoctoral research with the goal of, of becoming a faculty member someday. So it, it really means quite a lot to me to be able to come back here. Um, it's really been one of my great honors in life to be able to, you know, uh, teach the foundational things in chemical engineering that I love to the next generation of engineers at Columbia, and I, and I really am thankful for UMBC, thankful for the Alumni Association for this award. Congratulations, Dr. Hrabowski, and uh, thank you, UMBC. Please welcome Dr. Cheryl North, Clinical Assistant Professor for Literacy, Secondary Education. Dr. North will introduce Mr. Sean Pang as this year's outstanding alumnus in the humanities. The only thing worse about public speaking is having to do it with some of UMBC's greatest alumni. I'm nervous. So, it's my pleasure tonight to introduce our next honoree, Mr. Sean Pang. Um, Sean followed his older brother to UMBC and proceeded to make his six-year experience a unique one. He found his calling as a teacher while being actively involved on campus, working, playing volleyball, and being the senior managing, managing editor of our creative writing journal, The Bartleby. And um, he earned his master's and his bachelor's. I know you were judging him when you heard six years, but he came here and got his master's. <laughs> um, John, Sean was my advisee. Uh, student in my classes. I also supervised him when he was um, doing his internship as a teacher. Um, I really appreciated his energy and thoughtfulness that he brought with him to his teaching and learning. Um, his commitment to creating spaces of joy, knowledge, and safety in the classroom is a gift. He allows his own experiences from immigrating to the United States and being a learner of English as a second language to becoming involved with various clubs to encourage and connect with his students. And I would like to change that from um, just me. I know that his uh, mentor teacher also 
often told me how great he was, and we just um, sat back and watched him grow as a teacher. In 2017, Sean was named the Washington Post Teacher of the Year, and I said, we are proud of Sean, but not surprised that others have recognized him as Teacher of the Year. He is someone who is knowledgeable in English, student-centered, and a leader, and he still is today. Sean is preparing to teach in Singapore next year. We're still checking to see if that will happen. Um, so he can grow as a teacher internationally. I look forward to remaining in touch with him um, as he learns about education and grows as a teacher. I know that I'm also looking at plane tickets. You better have a good couch for me to sleep on. So please join me in welcoming educator, tutor, coach, mentor, Sean Pang as UMBC's 2021 Outstanding Alumnus and Humanities Awards recipient. Wow. <laughs> what an incredible honor to be back at UMBC. Uh, since I graduated in 2011, uh, I really never thought I'd be back 10 years later to receive this award. Um, I mean, to be honest, my first thoughts when I got the call was, wow, that's amazing. And my second thought was, why? <laughs> why me? I mean, um, you see, I had the privilege of speaking uh, with, with some of my fellow recipients earlier today, and my gosh, I am in awe of all the wonderful work that they do and continue to do. So I thought I worked hard, but these folks, they blow me out of the water. So what incredible people. Um, I'd be lying to say uh, I got here on my own, but that certainly is not true. Um, and to give thanks to every individual who has made this impact in my life, it would simply take forever. So instead, I'll just do my best, and uh, please know that this will never be enough. First of all, to UMBC and all the teachers in my life, you have taught me. Uh, and most of all, just good job. It is your passion and enthusiasm to help others that inspired me to be who I am, and so I thank you. Likewise, thank you to my students. You've taught me far more than you'll ever know, and you'll continuously allow me to learn more about myself in more ways than one. For example, how apparently my patience knows no bounds. Thank you to my aunts, uncles, and in-laws, both here in Maryland and overseas. You brought me up as your own child, and I always know that no matter where I go or what I do, love is never too far away. To my brothers and countless cousins, you're always a fantastic reminder to not take life too seriously and to always, always laugh, laugh, laugh. To this day, it's one of the best advice I give my kids. Of course, to the wonderful people who I have the honor of calling my friends through thick and thin, pandemic or not, thanks for not giving up on me. In its most metaphorical and literal sense, you are who I strive my children to become, and I treasure our friendship every single day. I do owe thanks to UMBC once again, because this is also where I met my wife. Uh, to Hawaii and my daughter Sophie, uh, know that you're both on my mind in everything I do, and I love you both very much. Uh, last but not certainly least, this award is dedicated to my parents. They can't be here today, but uh, to my father, who's at home right now battling cancer, it is remarkable how you continue to smile. Despite tedious chemotherapy sessions and fighting for your life, you still find reasons to be positive, and that's the courage that puts my own troubles to rest. Finally, thank you to my mother. Despite immigrating to America with four boys and learning English yourself, you were relentless and sacrificed everything to make sure your children had the best life possible. It's the weekly trips to the library that I discovered my love for books. It's from the patience you've shown helping me with homework late at night that I know there's hope in every student. It's from the boundless love that you show all human beings that made, me te that made teaching my life calling. Mom and Dad, it wasn't all for nothing. I hope I can continue to make you proud. Thank you to UMBC, thank you to the Alumni Association, thank you Dr. Herbowski, thank you all once again for this prestigious recognition. And I'll end with this promise, my work is just beginning. Thank you.
Please welcome Dr. Laura Antkoviak, Associate Professor and Director of the Sondheim Public Affairs Scholars Program. Dr. Antkoviak will introduce Ms. Teresa Bruce, this year's outstanding alumna in social and behavioral sciences. It is my pleasure to introduce this year's outstanding alumna in social and behavioral sciences, Teresa Bruce. Teresa didn't set out to be a teacher. She had her sights set on being a hotshot lawyer. Then, being part of the Sondheim Public Affairs Scholars Program made her realize that she wanted to work towards something more. Teresa speaks with incredible conviction, charisma, and candor. Her messages are compelling, yet also more credible, because she frankly acknowledges her own experiences as a student and the lessons she learned as she matured. Teresa is recognized as an innovative and highly effective teacher. And when she spoke to my first year seminar students, they appeared to respond to her with fascination and enthusiasm. She's active in the classroom with her district and in Baltimore City. And she pays it forward to UMBC students by speaking with Sherman scholars and Sondheim public affairs scholars. As part of Teresa's nomination, I wrote, much like Walter Sondheim, Teresa appears to be quickly becoming a go-to person in her field, in this case, education policy and public policy at the intersection of education and social justice, whose counsel and leadership is being sought by government leaders on projects with high impact potential. Please join me in recognizing Teresa Bruce, this year's outstanding alumna in social and behavioral sciences. Good evening, everyone. I really did think I was gonna be the next Johnny Cochran, for the record. I really did. Uh, but thank you, uh, Dr. Ann Koviak, for the introduction. I'd also like to thank President Rabowski, the UMBC Alumni Association, and everyone who made this event possible. I'd also like to thank my friends and my family who are here tonight supporting me um, from Baltimore City and from beyond. When I entered UMBC in the fall of 2005, I had no idea how integral the education I fostered here would be to my personal growth and development. I want to share with you one of my favorite stories. It's the story of the starfish, and it goes like this. There once were thousands of starfish stranded on a beach, and the tide was going away, and if the starfish didn't make it back, they'd die. And along came a man and he was picking them up one at a time and tossing them back. Another man came along and saw this and he said, what are you doing? There's thousands of starfish out here. You can't possibly expect to make a difference. At that moment, that first man, he bent down, he picked up another starfish, he threw it back, and he said, I just made a difference to that one. The starfish story exemplifies what UMBC taught me about the value of being in service to others. As a member of the Sondheim Public Affairs Scholarship Program, I was fortunate enough to be one of the very last classes that got to meet Walter Sondheim, Jr. He was a man who dedicated his life in service to others and encouraged others to do the same. Like Walter Sondheim, I envision a school system that promotes equity for all. Enter the profession of education. I am deeply motivated to change the status quo of our current public education system. I am an advocate for access to blended learning, self-paced mastery-based instruction, and choice-based independent reading, even if it means I have to frequently call upon my friends and family for Donors Choose projects. It's why I start from a place of empathy and understanding with my students and do everything I can to make a difference in their lives. I'm a proud product of the Baltimore City public school system, and it is my charge to create opportunities for the students coming behind me. Walter Sondheim once said, a city thrives or falters on the visions of its citizens. I leave you with two questions to reflect upon today. Ask yourself, what is your vision for your community? And how will you be in service to others? Thank you.
Please welcome Dr. Kathy O'Dell, Special Assistant to the Dean for Education and Arts Partnerships in the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences and Associate Professor of Visual Arts. Dr. O'Dell will introduce Mr. Teodros Melkeshua Williams as the Outstanding Alumnus of the Year in Visual and Performing Arts. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Filmmaker, animator, designer, professor, administrator, mentor. Tio embodies all these roles and more, moving on an arc from the local to the global and back, from the present to the future and back. Driven by deep research in visual culture, hip hop studies, and Afrofuturism, Teo's works have been screened at the World Film Festival and the DC Black Film Festival. He's had a Fulbright, taking him to Senegal and Morocco, and he won a Sony Innovators Award in animation and a Paul Robeson Award in film and video. But within this global and futuristic scope, or perhaps because of it, Teo's greatest professional and systemic impact has been right here in the state of Maryland, in the USM. He founded Visual Jazz, a film digital media studio collective based in Mount Rainier in 2012. And since 2003, has taught in Bowie State University's Department of Fine and Performing Arts, which he now chairs, and where he was instrumental in establishing the Visual Communication and Digital Media Arts degree program and Maryland's first and only minor in hip hop studies and visual culture. Most recently, he landed a commitment from the Golden Globe Award winning studio Leica to partner with BSU in launching the first stop motion animation studio in the country at an HBCU. Throughout, Teo has been a stellar mentor giving back to UMBC by presenting at our MFA welcome event and consulting with IMDA students, that's Intermedia and Digital Arts, our MFA program from which Teo graduated in 2000, consulting with IMDA students, researching in his areas of expertise. Teo, we're glad you're global and futuristic, but especially glad you always come back home here now, help me in honoring Teo Malkeshua Williams as the Outstanding Alumnus of the Year in Visual and Performing Arts. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so honored to be here. And first, I have to acknowledge and thank uh, Dr. Odell. She's been a huge part of my life and uh, very Im impactful. And so thank you so much for nominating me. And thank you, of course, to the uh, Alumni Awards Committee, Dr. Rabowski, who I still don't understand how he can remember every single person's name that he comes to. <laughs> but thank you, Dr. Rabowski. And so, so, so happy to see you leave, but a little bit of heartbreak as well. Uh, I'm going to start a little differently because I forgot this the last time and my wife got on me. So I'm going to thank my wife first. <laughs> Uh, Jennifer Williams, also my children, uh, Malcolm, uh, Menelik, uh, Makata, Bayana Belanish, I have a lot of children. <laughs> and I wanted to just acknowledge my parents and uh, just, just say I'm very, very humbled to come back here to, U to UMBC. And, um, you know, the, the, the foundation that was laid for me is really what I've, I brought to Bowie State University, our, our sister institution. So uh, I've got a long list of thank yous, uh, Dr. of course, Dr. Adele, uh, Dr. Perminda Jacob, uh, Vin Grable, Dan Bailey, uh, Alan Rutberg, uh, Sims Gardner, and Dr. Ackland Lynch, who was a huge, huge part of my life here at, at Bowie, at, I'm about to say Bowie State, UMPC. Uh, but this, this, pro, this institution has always had a, a really important place in my heart. Uh, I was going through very difficult times and almost did not make it through the MFA program. And, and it was actually while I was here at UMBC that I, I had a chance to go to Africa and, and, and incorporate a lot of the, my research, uh, a lot of my trips to Africa. Uh, my trip to Africa into my research in the visual arts. 
And so uh, this, this institution it really has meant so much to me. I actually was sitting here thinking, it was actually at Morgan State that I learned about UMBC because as, as an undergrad student, I took a course here uh, with Dan Bailey in film and I just fell in love with the program and I said, yes, I, I want to get into the MFA program. So again, thanks to, to Dan Bailey. Uh, but the, the other significant thing about being a student here at UMBC was not only the impact on, on my career as a chair and as a visual artist and filmmaker, but it really laid the foundation for me to, to focus in terms of, of socially engaged art and, social, and art with a purpose, art that focuses in social activism, things that we're actually incorporating now uh, at Bowie State in our program. And so uh, I just want to, again, just, just thank everyone for this, this huge honor. It's great to be back. Uh, again, I'm kind of sitting here going through memories. I remember the Yard Fest, George Parliament, Funkadelic, and just seeing, you know, seeing the, great, the great things when I had a chance to walk away from my, my thesis for a moment and enjoy, enjoy the campus. And so I've always felt uh, this is a wonderful place to be. And I just thank everyone for this honor. And um, yes, peace and blessings. And in words of George Clinton, you know, free your mind and your Assets will follow. Thank you so much. <laughs> Please welcome Mr. Gibb Mason, class of 1995, Pro professor of the practice and graduate program director for the Entrepreneurship, Innovation, and Leadership Program, and 2014 Distinguished Service Award recipient. Mr. Mason will introduce Mr. Michael Berardi, and Mr. Deep Patel as two of our Rising Star of the Year awardees. Thank you, voice in the back. <laughs> All right, good evening for the 14th or 15th time. I'm so proud and honored to be here tonight to introduce two of our Rising Stars. When I first met Deep Patel and Michael Berardi as students in my spring 2017 class, Creative Problem Solving and the Socialpreneur, I had no idea what the two of them would be able to accomplish. I knew they were excellent students. I knew they had boundless energy, and I was delighted by that. I also quickly learned that they were absolutely committed to change and making a difference in our community. But I was not expecting to be working with them more than four and a half years later. Whenever I teach this class, we start with a real world problem. The class spends the semester working on creative ways to affect change and to find solutions. I hesitated when campus leaders pitched me on a problem, a multiple decade divide between our UMBC community and our neighbors in Arbutus. But the class, including Deep and Michael, didn't hesitate. Out of that class came the idea of Okamoka, a new approach to entrepreneurship and town gown relationships, a coffee shop that creates, inspires, and supports community. After that semester, a small group of students were so excited, they wanted to keep going. Led by the unwavering Michael and Deep, they worked alongside university and community partners to make the dream a reality. I've seen these two tackle everyday tasks you can imagine, from sanding tables, painting walls, fundraising, business planning, hiring, inventory control, and unfortunately, the challenges of keeping a small business afloat during a global pandemic. Through it all, the dream of Okamoka has lived up to its mission. I'm so proud to be involved in their dream and to play a part as their mentor. To me, they exemplify what it means to be a retriever. Intelligence, grit, and unwavering commitment to community. Welcome, Michael and Dean. Michael said I had to go first, so I was kind of nervous. <laughs> uh, this is absolutely incredible. Uh, I wanted to give a big shout out to UMBC, the Alumni Association, for having us here. Uh, big shout out to Gib Mason. Um, for those that don't know, Gib doesn't live in Maryland, and actually uh, rescheduled a couple client meetings and flew out especially for those 90 seconds of an intro. Um, so thank you, Gib. Um, a lot of my speech is just a bunch of thank yous, but while I was sitting and listening to all the outstanding alumni behind me, I'm just truly inspired. And you guys are really awesome and inspirational. Uh, so thank you for them. Um, yeah, so I just want to say a bunch of thank yous. Thank you for uh, Marie, Lily, um, and Marianne Richmond for the nomination. Uh, we really appreciate you guys for being absolutely outstanding members of the Okamoka team and guiding us along the way. 
Um, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Lisa Auction and Joe Regeer for coming into our class that very first day and pitching us the idea or pitching us a question that would then lead us to the idea of Okamoka. Um, I want to give a shout out to all my friends and family that are here, uh, especially my parents um, as immigrants to America. They've worked tremendously to make sure that me and my family um, are able to be successful and give us all the resources needed um, to do what we need to do. Um, so thank you. Um, and I want to give a big shout out to everyone here, um, especially Dr. Browski and the President's Council, uh, for then at the time trusting 19 year olds um, with a pretty big budget and a crazy idea uh, that would lead to Okamoka. Um, and yeah, again, really thank you so much to everyone that's here present and also everyone present virtually. Um, you know, just showing up is really awesome. If there's anyone that I did miss, I promise you guys a free cup of coffee on me. So, <laughs> so thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Michael Berardi. I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. I'm incredibly honored by this whole experience. Um, Okamoka has been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun ever since the beginning. And I, Never could have imagined the amount of commitment that it took to get to this place, but I am so grateful for all of the support that we've had along the way. Um, I also have a ton of thank yous to give uh, to my parents for being incredibly supportive through the whole process, to my wonderful supportive girlfriend, Madeline, who was there the first day that we uh, pitched the project to the President's Council, to Hubrowski, and um, to the entire Okamoka team, I wish that all of the baristas and interns that have been a part of this project could be here tonight. They are incredible to work with. It is so much fun to be there all the time. Um, you know, we get to do a lot of live music, art, entertainment, and it's just a good time. We're just trying to bring people together. There's not a whole lot to community building other than that. It's bringing people together. It's inspiring each other to do what we want to do, pursue those passions, and share creativity, share our innovation together. Um, you know, my dad always says that uh, uh, rising tide raises all ships, and I truly believe that. And so I just wanted to thank you all for being here. and. Uh, Thank you, Deep, for being an incredible partner as well. We've been through a lot together. We've had a lot of time to get to know each other over the past four years, and it's, like I said, been a lot of fun. So thank you all. Thank you, Michael. Please welcome Mr. Stephen McAlpine, lecturer in the Individualized Study Program at UMBC. Mr. McAlpine will introduce Ms. Christine Osazawa, a Rising Star of the Year awardee. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us in this beautiful performance hall. Um, I think it's a perfect place to introduce uh, and uh, recognize Christine, who has devoted her life to the performing arts since she, since she booked a band at her birthday party when she was 14 years old. And she never stopped her devotion to music. She formed her own mu music magazine by the time she had come to UMBC as a freshman. She was already running this magazine, taking a full load of courses. And um, she, she wrote recently that uh, when she, the first time she walked into my office in fine arts, almost the entire office was filled with a drum set. And she knew then she had come to the right place that was in the fall of 2007, 14 years ago. And yes, Christine, the drum set is still there. I still play it. And um, imagine I've been working at UMBC for one year, and this charismatic young woman walks into my office and tells me that she'd like to create her own degree that combines music and entrepreneurship and journalism. And um, that is what she did. For her senior project, she proposed, uh, having been on the Vans Warp Tour as a music journalist and really seen this alternative rock scene, she proposed to create a 90-minute documentary film about fanatic fan behavior in, in music. Her faculty mentor said, whoa, you're an undergraduate. You only have two semesters. Maybe scale it down a little bit. 
She did it anyway. That's Christine. She produced a film called Always Wanting More. It's free on her website. And she has not slowed down since. She graduated in 2011. Um, and uh, she, in 2017, after spending three years working with UMBC professional programs in marketing and mentoring students in their individualized music business related programs, Christine moved abroad to Stockholm, Sweden. And there, she, she worked with Universal Music Sweden. She's worked for the Warner Music Group. And she recently joined the live music and travel startup, Pollen, as their strategy director to curate unique music experiences. Christine has managed to combine all of her passions into roles consulting and working with various music startups, venues, festivals, radio stations, and record labels bridging the gap between music, data, and business. A self-described Nigerian-American expat that has worked and lived in three countries, Christine takes her UMBC pride with her wherever she calls home. She supports UMBC students whenever possible and is actively connected to the alumni community. Christine currently lives and works in London and is unable to join us in person this evening. Please join me in listening to her remarks. Hello, UMBC. I'm Christina Sazawa coming virtually to you from London. It's a pleasure to get to pull out my black and gold dress for this, and it's an absolute honor to be here, so thank you. I was class of 2007 with an interdisciplinary studies degree in music entrepreneurship and journalism, or what you now call individualized studies. Thank you so much to Stephen McAlpine and the rest of the INDS team. As of a few weeks ago, I joined an amazing live music and travel tech startup called Pollen as their strategy director. We create curated travel experiences centered around live music and culture, most recently with artists like Jay Balvin and Justin Bieber. Prior to that, I spent time handling data strategy at Warner Music Group in London and Universal Music Group in Stockholm. And right before I crossed the pond, I spent three amazing years working at UMBC as the Assistant Director of Digital Strategies for Professional Programs on a team headed by Julie Gillis. All of those years ago, I chose UMBC twice because of the community. When I was applying to colleges at 16, UMBC was a school that felt like they were most excited to have me there. My achievements up until that point were recognized by UMBC, and I knew from the start that I would always have a family there. When I decided to go down the route of essentially creating my own major, I had so much support from the INDS department. Everyone moved mountains to make sure that I could make anything I wanted happen. They let me run wild with my idea of filming a documentary on a punk rock music festival. The first day I met Steven and I saw a full drum kit taking up most of the space in his office, I knew I was in the right place. And in my final year, the girl that made a documentary about music and social media found herself presenting her work next to students researching how to save lives. Talk about humbling. As I found myself in the class of 2007 featured students, I was reminded one more time that this was and will always be a place for me. It's a place where music and art are valued just as much as science and technology, and there was absolutely nothing wrong with doing a little bit of both. As a student in my senior year, along with some other fellow students, I had the opportunity to join a dinner with President Rabowski. It felt like something that would be completely unheard of at other universities, yet it was common practice at UMBC. Dr. Rabowski's presence permeates through the entire culture of UMBC. He had all of the options in the world, yet still chose to be there with us. The students and faculty always felt like his number one priority. Every time I was in his presence as a 17-year-old freshman to a much older staff member, I always wanted to rise to his expectations. It's commonly known fact that if you catch yourself in the elevator with him, be prepared to talk about what you're working on because he'll certainly ask. I always brace myself both as a student and a staff member with a presidential elevator summary ready just in case because he had the high expectations for every single one of us and you absolutely never wanted to let him down. I was incredibly grateful to get to be part of the community a few years post-graduation as well as being a staff member, I spent time giving back to the community by being a mentor to others that had decided to go down the path less travel and design a customized degree. Though I'm no longer physically nearby, I always do my best to stay connected, whether it be by having a call with current or fellow alumni um, looking to find a role in music, to contribute work to the UMBC magazine, or to speak on an upcoming UMBC panel focused on the music industry. I felt so much support at UMBC, and I hope I can do a little part to make sure others feel that too. 
I will forever be a retriever. And it's been an absolute honor to be recognized so many years after I physically left UMBC. Thank you all. Please welcome Mr. Roy Varghese, PhD student in the public, public policy program. Mr. Varghese will introduce Dr. Dr. Michael Hassett as the Distinguished Service Award recipient. Are we all inspired yet? <laughs> I truly am. Um, and it is my honor to introduce Dr. Michael Hassett for this award. Michael Hassett graduated from UMBC in 2019 with a PhD, just two years after his master's degree here. That itself should win an award because he was lightning fast and I had the privilege of being in class with him. He was a returned Peace Corps volunteer. He was invited to UMBC as a member of the Shriver Peace Worker Program. We, we first met in Dr. Lauren Edwards' class and the first thing he mentioned was the lessons he learned from Sergeant Shriver about the importance of service. And he managed to weave that into every comment he gave that first couple of weeks. But that made an impression on me. And later on, when he and I worked together at uh, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, we got to know each other a little bit more. And I continue to be very impressed with his drive with this grit and his deep personal commitment to service. You know, he served in AmeriCorps twice. He served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Tonga and also, as I mentioned, the UMBC Shriver Fellow. But he's also very down to earth in that he makes time to serve at home. Just as simple as bringing his world famous uh, eggplant parmesan over when somebody is sick. That is service and is very much appreciated. He is an extremely committed and giving person who cares deeply about making this world a better place. Getting his master's as a, as a peace worker fellow and then continuing, to UMBC, continuing in UMBC to receive his PhD, he made it clear that education should serve as an important part for him to support the community and others in need and give back to the community that gave him so much. In 2018, he co-founded the nonprofit Friends of Tonga in response to a very traumatic weather event in that small kingdom. Since its inception, Dr. Hassett has served as the president and has spearheaded initiatives to support the educational development opportunities in the tiny kingdom of Conga, which makes huge impact to the young children in that country. Michael is also dedicated to preparing the current UMBC community members for federal job opportunities. And I, I experienced that firsthand as he was the loudest proponent of UMBC at our campus in, U in uh, Silver Spring, going five levels above his supervisors to champion UMBC. So we should be proud of that. And his focus on diversifying the federal work workforce, very, very inspirational to me. He's diligent about highlighting the opportunities available. As a matter of fact, I think he spoke to a couple of classes this week at UMBC about how those opportunities and the need for the retrievers to be part of the federal workforce and make an impact. And he is also using his education, his research um, from his PhD to inform the policies that create a more engaged workforce. I could really keep going, talk about Dr. Hassett. I call him Michael but he should speak for himself. Please join me in recognizing Dr. Michael Hassett as this year's Distinguished Service Award recipient. Is everyone with me? 
Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished, uh, just kidding. <laughs> it's wonderful to be here tonight among so many distinguished guests at such a rarefied event. I'm humbled, pleased, and incredibly honored to be here and to be recognized by UMBC and the Alumni Association. An organization is more than buildings and rooms. Rather, it is the people who animate its mission and purpose. It's those people who give the buildings life. I have been incredibly fortunate to have many mentors and inspirations that have animated UMBC. The Shriver Peaceworker Program is especially noteworthy, and I would not be receiving this recognition tonight if it were not for its vision of providing Return Peace Corps volunteers with programming dedicated to ethical leadership and cultivating a community that desires to affect positive change by bringing lessons learned abroad and applying them to local challenges. Conversely, the education skills and personal relationships that I gained at UMBC helped equip me to envision and develop Friends of Tonga. Friends of Tonga is a people-to-people -people partnership that has supported educational and development relationships and program opportunities in the Kingdom of Tonga for four years now. To date, we've been able to fund over 50 scholarships for high school education, design and implement a pen pal program that connects Tongan students with international classrooms, create a video read aloud library that the Ministry of Education has disseminated to every school in the Kingdom of Tonga, and support the construction of the first cyclone resistant early childhood education center in all of Tonga. The results of our collaboration have been humbling. We have seen our partners increase their average test scores by up to 33%, and together we've moved the needle on literacy rates across every island group. The cross-cultural relationship, relationships established in the Peace Corps have now become an impactful international program effort recognized by both the National Peace Corps Association and the Library of Congress, which recently honored us with the Library of Congress Literacy Award. UMBC is the genesis of this organization, and the spirit and people of this place are intimately ingrained in everything that we do. Dr. Joby Taylor, has connected us with the National Peace Corps Association and helped mentor me through the process of co-founding and designing the vision of Friends of Tonga. Roy Varghese has served on the board for the past three years and has leveraged his 20 plus years of senior executive experience to help bring Friends of Tonga to where we are today. Dr. Lauren Edwards has guided us through the strategic planning process to map out where we can take this organization in the next five, 10 years. And of course, Dr. Freeman Rabowski who imbues UMBC with a passion for service and encourages us to dig deep and find that grit to do great things, especially when it is not easy. And finally, to my wife, Kiar Collette, who I met in the Peace Corps in Tonga, who has designed and implemented the programming for Friends of Tonga and has just graduated with her master's from TESOL from UMBC. Retrieve her proud. She is actively applying her education to real life challenges. Not only has her vision of low cost, high impact programming, such as our pen pal program and our video resource library, made us a model for other organizations, but her support and passion for education, and as my life partner in all things, has made Friends of Tonga possible and indeed thrive. UMBC is a special place filled with compassionate, dedicated people who are making the world a better and more equitable place one community at a time. It is because of them that I am dedicated to continue to connect and support UMBC. It is because of them that I'm here tonight. Malo alpito, moe ofalahi atu. Thank you and with much love. Please welcome Mr. Karndeep Singh, M26, class of 2018 alumnus, President of UMBC's Chapter of Young Alumni, and PhD student at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. He will introduce Dr. Michael Summers as this year's Outstanding Faculty Award recipient. Good evening, everyone. I am the last nominator that's holding you from dinner, so I'll make this brief. <laughs> Today, I have the pleasure to introduce my boss, my mentor, and my friend, Dr. Michael Summers. Dr. Summers is the Robert E. Meyerhoff for Excellence in Research and Mentoring and Distinguished University Professor of UMBC. He has been an investigator with the Howard Hughes Medical Institute for over 25 years 
and a professor at UMBC for over 30 years, in addition to being a member of the National Academy of Sciences. In his career, more than 20 postdoctoral researchers have conducted research in his lab. Over 40 graduate students have earned their graduate degrees and over 300 undergraduate students have had the opportunity to conduct research in his laboratory to determine if research is a passion to pursue. When I graduated from UMBC in 2018, I made a really difficult decision to take a gap year before pursuing graduate school. I decided to join his laboratory as a technician to determine if I had that same passion for research. During my time, I had conducted research in two different laboratories at UMBC, but I remained hesitant until I joined his laboratory. After joining his laboratory, I felt confident in myself to learn new protocols, develop scientifically driven hypotheses, and execute biochemical experiments, in, including improving my ability to speak to different audience, audiences and learned how to mentor my own group of undergraduate students who are discovering their own passion for research. Now as a graduate student in his laboratory, I have the opportunity to learn new experimental skills and also figure out how to shorten my graduate studies because now I understand why it takes forever to pursue a graduate degree. <laughs> Some of my favorite moments with him have been coming in on a Saturday morning to finish experiments from the night before and seeing him in his office with an open door policy to talk about any challenges that I might be facing, both personally and in the laboratory, or talk about how excited we are to watch the Ravens play on Sunday. Dr. Summers believes in the power of mentorship, and it, that exemplifies in his work. It is especially obvious when he's asking questions about your project and providing advice at four o'clock in the morning. Now, many of you have had these similar interactions with him, so let me tell you some facts that you might not be aware of. Dr. Summers will take you on a seven-mile hike and call that a short walk and suggest going on a mountain biking tour afterwards. He secretly loves pranks, so if you ever see him holding a water balloon, I suggest you run away. At any point, he might come up to you and suggest having a push-up competition in front of the entire laboratory I also suggest you run away unless you think you can take him. Even though he's busy interpreting new data, writing grants, and just being swamped with meetings, Dr. Summers ensures that the lab has a passion-filled environment that's full of fun and a vibrant community. In summary, it's a family. It's my absolute pleasure to ask my mentor and friend, Dr. Summers, to come forward and be recognized as this year's Outstanding Faculty Member of the Year. Wow, thank you, Kandeep. That was unbelievably nice. Um, well, I wouldn't be here tonight if it weren't for a lot of sacrifices made by my wife, Holly, uh, who's here tonight. And um, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many uh, dinners had to be reheated multiple times because experiments took longer than we expected. So thank you. I just want to say how grateful I am to be recognized by our alumni. As many as I'm sure many of you know, academic life can be filled with a million activities and a million more distractions. And it can be easy to forget that we are here in the first place for our students. Our students are the number one reason why we are at UMBC. Over the course of my first 34 years at UMBC, I've had the privilege of working with some of the most amazing and talented young people that anyone could imagine. They've come from many different backgrounds and different walks of life, but to the person, they all exhibited a common trait that you already saw in Carndeep. They sought to achieve at the highest possible levels, and they did so in a manner that supported and enhanced the possibilities of the people around them. Let me give you some examples. Chelsea Stalling was among the first Meyerhoff scholars to join my lab. She went on to earn her MD, PhD at UPenn and is now a professor and director of the residency program at MD Anderson, which is the premier cancer research hospital in the US. Erin Lolliger joined my lab when she was 14 years old. 
She published three papers before graduating at 18 years old and went on to earn her MD, PhD from Harvard. Erin is now completing a fellowship in obstetrics research at Stanford University. Isaac Kinde turned down Stanford to come to UMBC, where he helped discover a new way to inhibit HIV. Isaac went to Johns Hopkins for his MD, PhD before helping found a Baltimore company that is actually revolutionizing cancer detection and health care for women. It's a huge deal what he's doing. I'd also like to mention Darian Cash, who studied RNA structure in my lab before going to UCLA to earn his PhD in another big RNA lab. Darian has, for the past several years, worked for Moderna, where he worked in collaboration with Kismikia uh, Corbett at NIH to help develop uh, the Moderna vaccine, which is an RNA vaccine. And our future alumni are just as impressive. Karndeep Singh, who just introduced me, recently published a paper in Science Magazine that describes the molecular details of how HIV spreads. And I can tell you, most faculty at Hopkins will go their whole careers with, and never publish in Science Magazine. These and many other UMB students I've interacted with over the years have brought amazing energy, creativity, and passion to our campus. They've given my life meaning that far surpasses that associated with simply publishing papers or giving talks at professional conferences. A few years ago, right after my father passed away, I discovered great comfort not from rereading papers we'd published, but instead from rereading the personal letters and emails I'd received from current and former students and sometimes from their parents. I've learned over the years that as faculty, it's the relationships we develop with our students that are far more long-lasting and more important than the papers we write. So to all the UMBC alumni who have shared time with me, not only in the lab at UMBC, but on the bike trails uh, at Patapsco Park or at the ski slopes in Maine, let me just say, in the immortal words of the Sister Sledge, and from the bottom of my heart, we are family. Thank you. And now, UMBC President Freeman Rabowski will offer his final reflections and closing remarks. And I promise to be brief. I am so impressed by the Alumni Association, Brian and Leslie. You said we'd go into about 8. We're getting out of here by 8.03. So give the Alumni Association a round of applause. All right. It's time. It's, it's time. This has been so impressive. And Mike said it so well. Michael Summers at the end there about relationships. Every time I'm in this space, the first thing I think about is just the power of the arts and humanities to connect us in special ways. And it amazes me every time that when I'm in here and I'm looking down, it's as if we're sitting around the dining room table. There's a sense of community here as we talk and listen. It was Eleanor Roosevelt, a great American, who once said that the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Tonight represents dreams fulfilled and a long way still to go. The youth of our alumni, many of whom have graduated in the last 20 years, sometimes in the last 10 years, and they're getting all this national and international reputation, people who are working everything from in our own system at another sister institution in the arts to working in, in England and London and around Europe in music entrepreneurship to working in Baltimore City as a teacher or in the state as a teacher to working in our own community. Michael, I watched your father as he was videotaping, he was recording you there with such pride as you talked about him and I looked at their faces, your parents to looking at the faces of people who came here from Ohio to see Dr. Kate Tracy, who today endowed a major 
gift to the Women's Center. Would you give Dr. Kate Tracy a hand for that? To listening to you, Leslie, as you talked about the four alumni, and I'm always trying to get people to be right about their pronunciation of words. Remember, in the spirit of the alumni, if you are an alumnus, you are a male. If you're an alumna, a woman, right? A lot of alums, men and women, alumni, but when there are four women, you are AE. It's alumni, as she said, most correctly. But it was amazing to see those four fabulous women who've made such a difference with COVID. Give them all a round of applause, would you? Really nice. And finally, in the human, in the spirit of the human dimension, as Letitia talked about her baby, <laughs> and the idea of him being a part of the humbling experience. To talking with Caitlin, who really does have twice as many hits for the TED Talk. Go watch her TED Talk, but watch mine too. The, uh, <laughs> and she's under half my age. But to hear her, this leading scientist, I mean, I talked to Francis Collins, Collins the head of NIH, and he tells about our Kismika and about, about Caitlin as a leading scientist in COVID research, who tells me about years ago uh, working in a veterinarian office and focusing on dog poop. She was, so you think about from dog poop to having a big TED talk, it's, I mean, it shows the human factor, you get my point, that she, and that she would tell it with pride and saying she learned so much from those experiences. And finally, when you think about who we are as a university. We are the representation of the dreams of so many people, of people who came here in 1966, of Bob and Mimi Dietrich, who have been here all these years, like so many others, who believe in this place when it was of a, of a guy, a, a kid from Cadenceville, who becomes the chair of the, the professor of chemical engineering at an Ivy League institution, and a young black woman from rural North Carolina who's now in the faculty at Harvard, and it can go on and on. We believe in each other. We believe in the need to dream big. We know that together we can do so much more than as individuals, and we are doing that. I am so proud to be leaving UMBC at a time when we are thriving in research, more grants than ever before. We'll be announcing some very prestigious grants from foundations and others very soon. We're working with other institutions. I am proud to leave at a time when we have a 20% increase in freshmen this year, a 40% increase in, in grad students, and most important, where people around the country are wanting to know the secret sauce of this place. And what they will come to know, it is relationships. It is that we believe in each other. It's not about any one person. It is about all of us. And even as I leave, I am in UMBC, and UMBC is in me. And in our DNA is this notion of excellence, of inclusive excellence. And so I repeat again those words. The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. Thank you so much. Come to the reception downstairs. I've been cooking all night, and you are now excused. Thank you very much. OK, do this with me very quickly. Repeat after me. Stand up and do this with me. Thoughts, words, actions, habits, character, destiny. One time, like you at that UVA basketball game. Thoughts. Words, actions, habits, character, destiny. Congratulations, UMBC.